Oh, you're already here. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I'm your speaker today. My name is Mikael Olsson, or as I usually say when I speak English, I'm, my name is Michael Olsson. Uh, I am a member of Åre Rotary Club in Sweden, District 2330. And uh, I am the IT coordinator, or CICO, as it's called in English, Club Internet Communication Officer. Also, I am the, the same thing in the District 2330, but then District Internet Communication Officer. And in that capacity, I am also sitting in the executive comedy of the IT comedy in Sweden. Uh, we have a, a common common base or some common workaround that we work with all the 10 districts in Sweden in a, in a joint session every now and then, <clears throat> two times a year. We meet two times a year in this comedy, in the big comedy. Uh, in the in the executive comedy, however, we we don't have daily talks, but uh, at least once a week. Uh, maybe not all, all four of us, but some of us speak over the phone or just a Skype meeting or something. Um, but that's not what I'm here to speak about, really. Uh, a little bit of it, I will speak about it. Mainly I'm going to speak about a PR uh, project that we have in, in our district. It's a podcast radio station. Uh, if you don't know what a podcast is, I can tell you that it's a, like a radio show or a radio station. Uh, it can also be video, but we, we're aiming mostly to the radio part. <coughs> and uh, it's a, a radio show that it's not airing in or broadcasting in the air like a, a traditional radio station, but it's uh, over the internet. You can listen to it in a web browser. Uh, you can also subscribe to it in, for instance, iTunes and have it on, on your iPhone or your iPod or such thing. Uh, there is also possibilities to, to subscribe via... Uh, if you have an Android, for instance, uh, an Android phone, you can also uh, subscribe to it. However, <coughs> uh, what we do is... Uh, we do a, a show. We're aiming for one in a month, once a month, and it's mostly uh, interviews uh, with uh, inspiring interviews with projects that change people's lives. Uh, it's been five episodes released by now. Uh, a sixth one is on its way. It will be released well, probably within two weeks or so. And uh, we're aiming the the target audience for this is younger professionals, uh, 25 to 50 years old. And as I said, we try to make it inspiring uh, to hear what Rotary is, because we're aiming for those who are not Rotarians. Uh, and hope to, to fill up the clubs with a, a bunch of new members. Uh, this uh, podcast is funded by a peer grant from Rotary International and uh, in-kind donations from two companies in our districts. It's uh, my own company, IT Ore, which I'm a part, of, part owner in. Uh, and uh, there is another company called BNG Sweden, which is uh, a PR company uh, with, a, with an office here in Sweden. So you can listen to this while you're commuting back and forth to work. You can listen to it while while doing your workout or something. Uh, and um, the fact that it's uh, a new media production, which is using the internet and um, and units like iPhone, makes it easier for the younger persons to to listen to to take part of it. Uh, of those five episodes that we have released so far, there's only one in English. And that's probably the way it's going to be. Uh, uh, very few in English and mostly in Swedish, since we're actually producing them for the Swedish audience or the Swedish population. And the site is rotaryradio.se. Rotaryradio.se. On that site, you find a tab called Live. So if you click that Live tab, you will find some uh, 
some interviews that we made with video actually on during the Sohn Institute in Sonsvold here in Sweden. It's uh, not far from where I live actually, it's just three hours by car. So I took my gear in and went over there and uh, interviewed a bunch of people, uh, among others the, the incoming Roadrunner International President Ron Burton from Oklahoma, uh, Hugo Pike from England, uh, a Russian member called, uh, I can't pronounce it, but Eugenia, in, it's uh, the international pronunciation I suppose, uh, and some other persons as well. So you can click over there and, and have a look and listen to what they had to say. Uh, and also this podcast production is, uh, if any one of you would be interested in, interested in such a production, uh, contact me and I'll, I'll try to help you. Uh, depending on what kind of help you need, it's, uh, it can be free or it could be through my company and I need to, to charge some for it, depending on also who the customer is. Uh, podcasting is also used by companies to either to, to sell content and, and actually getting paid for what they know and what they teach people via video or audio podcast uh, and you can also a lot of companies use it to give away some free knowledge uh, freebies for the for the listener or for the viewer to actually attract more customers uh, since they see that oh this guy or this girl is uh, is giving of of his knowledge for free, and and I'm interested in what she or he he or she says. So I'm going to contact him, and on that uh, on that track, they will find new customers <coughs> that they later can can send an invoice to. Uh, let's see about the IT part then. Uh, we're, as I said, we're 10 districts in Sweden. We have something called MDAG, Multi-District Action Group. And we are actually using the the same uh, database engine or, or uh, system, actually, for all of the clubs and districts in Sweden. So we have one big system for all of us, all the 550-some clubs and 10 districts. Uh, it's quite... I know that your club is using uh, Club Runner. Uh, most of you probably haven't seen so much about it, I guess, suppose. It's mostly the officers in the club who have a daily contact or a weekly contact with this system like that. But it's, uh, it's quite common to what we have. Uh, and Club Run has some things that we don't, and we have um, some more things that Club Run doesn't have. Uh, but mainly, it's it's uh, the same system. It's um, attendance reporting, uh, programs for the club, a web engine, so you can have a web page for the club. And uh, about 98 percent of the Swedish clubs uh, do actually have their homepage via this system. Uh, it's very few about 2% then, who has the knowledge and capacity to do anything else and make their own web page. The web engine in this system has been around for a while, uh, since in early 2000 something, and the design and layout is not very modern at, at uh, the present time, but we're looking into that and we'll be changing uh, within a couple of years. We have a plan to actually do some quite substantial changes not only to the web part but also the, the back office part so to speak also this system was actually just to give a, a his, brief history of it uh, it was actually built in 1997 and uh, hence probably one of the first web based rotary systems ever uh, we didn't come up with the idea of ourselves actually we 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 came to a provider and asked him for something else and that we would have a a disk base you know the floppy disks uh, in that 
era, um, era. <laughs> the floppy disks were quite common and uh, the system was to have a client on, in each and every club who reported via a, a floppy disk sent it in by regular post or e not email sorry and sent it in by uh, mail regular mail however that was uh, not being built because we had two gentlemen who proposed that we wouldn't do a web-based system and this was back in 97 I mean it's quite an early start for it I myself had internet and, and was using the web but I had only been doing it for two years or so and most people didn't know what, what it was maybe they heard of the web so um, it was interesting because these two uh, guys that made the system uh, they are pensioners like now and they have never been a Rotarian but they came up with this and, uh, and made, built a system for us let's let's do some questions so shoot some questions to me via the Facebook site and uh, I'll try to answer them as to the best of my ability so um, thank you for letting me speak to you and uh, have, have a good day